Welcome to Hebrew Israelite, Tribe of Judah, Disciple of Christ. I'm your host, Brother Mike. Today's lesson, Who Shall Be Saved by the Lord Jesus, the Son of God? And it's pretty basic in the sense that everybody think they know and <laughs> so uh, I let a lot of the churches they go around and you know tell people how to get saved and all this kind of stuff so it seems like it's pretty basic but this is a new I say new but a different twist we just be getting into the word and seeing what the word has to say about it because if you don't get into the word and you just go off of what you think it is then you may miss the mark so we're going to exactly we're going to see exactly what the word what the bible has to say about it who shall be saved by the lord jesus christ the son of god okay first scripture we're going to look at is in genesis 45 and 7 and we're dealing with uh, Joseph who's talking to his brothers while he's in Egypt. He said, And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So in line with what we're about, who shall be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, we see here that Joseph had went to uh, his brothers had put him in a pit and uh, some people came out when well, no, all they uh, sold him to some people that was going down to Egypt uh, Ishmaelites and Ishmaelites sold him into Egypt so he ended up in Egypt and ended up becoming Pharaoh and it was a, a famine in the land and they had to go to Egypt to get some food. And by doing this, they end up running into their brother. <laughs> and he's now the Pharaoh. And he's talking to him. He said, And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So he's telling them. Look, don't take it to to don't hold you, hold on to it so bad that you know you feel bad about what happened. Uh, Genesis chapter forty seven verse twenty five, and they said, "Thou hast saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servant." So they accepted those words. And now they know that they're being sustained because of this. So they said, Thou hast saved our lives alive. Saved our lives. So uh, let us find grace in the sight of the Lord. And uh, Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 it says, But as for you, thou evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring it to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. So, uh, even though wrong was done, they were able to see the right, at least the hand of God in it, that their lives would be uh, sustained. And even according to prophecy, you know, that Abraham had about them going into Egypt uh, so this is part of that prophecy being fulfilled but while they were in Egypt go to Exodus 14 and 30 you know they became uh, they became uh, had to do bondage hard bondage hard labor because uh, the Egyptian king at the time after the one that knew Joseph had died another one rose up that didn't know Joseph so he made the the, uh, the Hebrew lives hard the Exodus 14 and 30 
Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptian dead upon the seashore. So again, who was saved? Israel. The Lord saved Israel. So that is the main point that I'm driving so that you can get a foundation and a biblical understanding of who is being saved throughout the scriptures from the Old Testament to the New Testament who is being saved thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore so God saved who? Israel. I have to keep asking this because somewhere in our minds something has happened and we're not connecting all the dots because we've been fed this uh, information about the scriptures that has not really been lining up. Another thing I want you to understand these Egyptians they're, they're being killed, right? <laughs> They were dead up on the seashore. But you don't hardly hear this part that much talked about because everybody wants to say God is loving. But God saved Israel. He didn't care about the Egyptians. That's the point. That's what we need. That's what you need. To. God only cares about Israel. He didn't care about the Egyptians. I know this is probably for those that don't know this is hard for you to understand oh God loves everybody no he doesn't he only loves Israel that's his people we'll keep reading you'll get it but you probably if it offends you then you probably need to just stop listening right now and turn it off because that's all you're gonna see throughout the scriptures okay let's go to numbers 10 and 9 and if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppress you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. So Israel have enemies. So if they're enemies of Israel, then they're enemies of God. But he said that you should blow an alarm with the trumpets and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God and you shall be saved from your enemies so the enemies that are, were oppressing he said if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppress you so Israel was being oppressed sometime but when they blew on those horns <laughs> The Lord your God shall save you from your enemies. There's a theme throughout these slides. I hope you're picking up on it, but we'll get into that a little later on. Let's go to another scripture. Deuteronomy 20 and 4. For the Lord your God is he with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you the Lord your God he goes with you to fight against your enemies so what is this telling us and this is what I want you to really understand if Israel have enemies then they're also the enemies of God so God can't love everybody he only loves Israel. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. So he's going to fight against Israel's enemies. Though so he doesn't love everyone. You need to really understand this. But God loves everyone. No, he doesn't. Let's go to another scripture, Deuteronomy 20, 16. But of the cities of these people which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing 
that breathed. What is the Lord saying? The cities of the people which the Lord thy God doeth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breathed. When you go to war, take the city. Don't leave nobody alive. Kill everybody, everyone. Woman, man, boy, girl, child. It doesn't matter. Thou shalt save alive nothing that breathes. <laughs> so he probably says, so why are you bringing this up? Because I'm trying to get you to understand who shall be saved by the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. Who shall be saved? Israel shall be saved. Not everybody. God didn't come to save everybody. He only come to save Israel, his chosen people. And the scripture says that from the beginning to the end, to Genesis to Revelation. But for somehow, some reason, uh, somebody them got mixed up. <laughs> Deuteronomy 29, 18. Lest there should come, lest there should be among you a man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Okay, God is put on the law of his word to Israel. And he wants them to understand. He said, at least there should be among you a man or woman or family or tribe. Who is he talking to? Israel. Who is this word for? Israel. Whose heart turn away this day from the Lord our God. He's only talking to Israel. He's not talking to no other people in this world. No other people on this earth. Only Israel. To go and serve the gods of these nations. Those God don't care about these other people. At least there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Deuteronomy twenty nine nineteen, and it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace. Though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst. Okay? When you do this, you think, oh, I can, you can do whatever you want to do and walk in the imagination of your heart and you're going to have peace. You're setting yourself up for destruction because God don't play. <laughs> as good as he'll destroy all these all the other nations, he will destroy you too. He already said, woman, man, tribe, it doesn't matter. You better act right. <laughs> Deuteronomy 29 and 20. The Lord will not spare, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man and all the curse that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out name from under heaven. You better take heed to this word. God ain't playing. It's from the Old Testament to the New Testament. He's saying the same exact thing. He does not change. If you are Israel and that's who he's talking to, the Lord will not spare. So if you ain't acting right, you ain't doing according to what's written in this book. The Lord shall blot out your name from under heaven. Period. Because from the foundation of the world, he already wrote down our names. He knows who we are. That's why he sent his son Jesus so that we could be saved. Israel. But if you don't want to act right, you don't want to do what he say, you can hit the road. <laughs> There's the door. <laughs> Because your name is going to be blotted out of the book of life from under heaven. You're not going to be able to get into the kingdom of heaven. If your name ain't on the list, on the roll, you can't get in. I hope you're paying attention. Did I 
I miss one scripture? Let's see. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, Deuteronomy 29, 21. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law. So again, who is he talking to? All the tribes of Israel. Nobody else. That's all he's talking to. The Lord shall separate him unto evil. Out of all the tribes of Israel. If you don't act right, you're getting cut out the wheel. <laughs> you ain't getting nothing. Deuteronomy 33, 29. But it says, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellence, and thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. The Lord is saying, Who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, who is the sword of thy excellence? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Everybody that's not Israel is, is nothing to the Lord. We're going to tread upon them. They're going to be our servants. The scripture says this over and over and over and over. But you don't hear this. From the pulpit, from the Christian churches. And I wonder why. Okay. Israel is on the march. Joshua is their leader. They're going into the promised land. They sent out some spies. Joshua 2 and 1. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab, lodged there. Now see, that's just like us colored folks. That's who they know about. Not that Rahab. Rahab the harlot. <laughs> you just call it what it is. They know the sugar coating it. You know, you got the Rahab that lives up the block. You got the Rahab that lives down the street. But now you got to go to Rahab the harlot. <laughs> and so, I want to bring out something here, though, because it's very important. I'll get to it in a second. Joshua 2 and 9. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord had given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land fainted because of you. So she said that she know that the Lord has given them the land and that the terror has fallen on them because of the, what the Lord has done. I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror has fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint. Everybody is afraid of you. Why? Why are they afraid? We have how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you. When ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed, the fear of God is in her heart and all the people around her. They are terrified, and they know what's coming. And so... As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. The same way God went about destroying folk, getting them out the way for Israel, same way he's going to do when he's coming back because his people were in bondage, we're in, we're in captivity, and he's going to be coming back to, to wreak havoc. On all those folks that have put us in captivity. But uh, what I want you to understand right here is. Uh, let's go a little further in the next verse. 
passage in Joshua 2 and 11. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in our mind because of you. For the Lord your God, he, it is, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. So they know who God is, these people other than Israel. They know your God is God. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's God, all right, to do all that stuff. Joshua 2 and 12. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. So this person, she's a harlot for one thing, and the next thing, she's of another nation not even Israel but she's fearing for her life she's praying to the spies I pray you swear unto me by the Lord since I've showed you mercy because <laughs> she hid them so the other people of her nation couldn't find them that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token Joshua 2.13 and that ye shall save alive my father and my mother and my brother and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. She got a whole bunch of fish. <laughs> Please have mercy on us. I don't blame her. Joshua 2.14 And the men answered her, Our life, our life for, your, for yours, if ye utter not this our business. And it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. You see, because God told him, look, kill everybody. Don't have no mercy on anybody. But because she helped them out, they're going to have mercy on her. And the point I'm trying to make here is that, you know, it's a big controversy over who can be saved. And that's why I'm bringing this out. It's because... God is only coming for Israel, point blank. But if these people want to help Israel in some certain kind of fashion or way, y'all can be saved, but y'all going to be our servants. <laughs> That's what it's really going to be, but ain't nobody talking to you like that. Nobody is saying that. But that's how it is. So, but she don't care. As long as her life gets spared and her family's life. So, Joshua 6.25, And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. So even unto this day, the name of Rahab, even though she, she was a harlot, a whore, you know, God have mercy on her. It's a scripture that says the whores going to heaven before these Pharisees. So, God will have mercy on these people other than Israel if they will bow down to Israel because they need to understand and recognize who we are. And if they don't, they're going to be cursed. This is the promise that God made to Abraham, he said, Whoever blessed thee will be blessed, and whoever cursed thee will be cursed. Because we are the seed of Abraham, it's that, 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 that blessing and curse is still active, relevant to this day, even though we're in captivity. Whoever bless us will be blessed. Whoever curse us will be cursed. And they can be saved, but they're going to be our servant if they're not Israel. So that's the, one of the main points I want you to understand because it happened in the Old Testament. Therefore, it's relevant for the New Testament. Samuel 3.18 Now then, do it. For the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel. Out of the hand of the Philistines. 
and out of the hand of all their enemies. So, the Lord is going to save who? His people, Israel. Out of the hands of the Philistines and out of the hands of all their enemies. We're in the land of our enemies today, but the Lord is going to save us out of the hands of our enemies by this, his servant David, which is Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. First Chronicles 17.21 And what one nation in this earth is thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by drawing, driving out nations from before thy people whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel? There's nobody like us whom God went to redeem to be his own people. We are the people of God. Please understand that. We are the people of God. Have you been noticing the themes of the picture that kind of look like this? <laughs> to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. So when they went out of Egypt, God wiped out all those nations to give them that land. <laughs> Psalms 44 and 3 For they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and the, uh, thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hadst favor unto them so Don't get the big head thinking we did it We didn't do jack God <laughs> did it for us because Thou had his favor unto them. He loves us. So he's watching over us and protecting us and gave us this land. We, we, we messed up big time. I don't like those guys to be out there. I, I, my hat's off to them to be, be preaching. But I don't know why they got to use all that profanity all the time. I don't know. That's them. But anyway, we messed up. We messed up big time. We sinned. Turn our backs on the Lord. The Lord told us what was going to happen. And so we ended up getting kicked out of our land. <laughs> God don't play. He's for real. We should know by now. Even when the children of Israel was going to the promised land, folks were still acting a fool. Black people just always acting a fool. Why are we always acting a fool? God, if you act a fool, you ain't getting in. <laughs> And some of them didn't get in. He swear by he said I, I, my wrath. I swear on my wrath. They not getting in. Period. God ain't playing. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. He's not playing. Get right or get left out. <laughs> Psalm seven and fifteen. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. Say it again. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people. Who? His people, Israel. Thy sons of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. God has redeemed us. We are the saved of the Lord. Psalm 106 and 8. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. He ain't saving us for us, because we don't deserve it. But for his name's sake, <laughs> everything he's doing is for him. That's why everything we should do should be for him, and not ourselves. We shouldn't be trying to build up our own little kingdom and palace and all that stuff. Everything we should do we should bring glory and honor to the Lord. That's why we're here. We're not here for ourselves. Man, this is going to be quite a bit of long lesson. Uh, 
I hope y'all patient because it's going to last a while, but there's a lot of scriptures, but I hope it blesses you, and I hope you're being blessed right now. Isaiah 30, 15, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye, should, and ye would not. Same thing happened in the Old Testament. The Lord, you know, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Who is his own? Israel, specifically Judah. Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah. The Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And not. Listen. Won't listen. And still today, won't listen. Try to tell somebody, you Israel. Look at you like you crazy. What are you talking about? But you better, you, be, you better pay attention. Isaiah 35 and 4. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God, with the recompense, and he will come and save you. Glory to God. It's going to be just like that. Don't be afraid. Don't have a fearful heart. Be strong. Fear not. Your God will come with vengeance. Who's he coming with vengeance for? All these other nations. Because they have put us in captivity. That's why he's coming. Not but God loves everybody. No, he doesn't. He loves Israel. Get that into your mind and in your heart and your soul. He loves Israel. He's coming with vengeance. That's what the word of God says. I'm not making this up. <laughs> Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Who is he talking to? Israel. Nobody but Israel. Israel, but Israel, nobody but Israel, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Everlasting. You shall not be ashamed nor confound world without end. You are Israel. Please understand that. Please, 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 please. Wake up. I wish you could just understand. You are Israel. How many times do I have to tell you that? Isaiah 63 and 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bared them and carried them all the days of old. Jesus is all throughout the Old Testament and he's all throughout the New Testament. Whatever we're going through, he's gone through with us and for us. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. He has carried us all these days. He's never left. He said, I never leave you or forsake you. He's still with us. Jeremiah 23 and 6. In his days, Judah shall be saved. And Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called. The Lord our righteousness. In his days Judah. Who's Judah? Judah is the tribe that Jesus come out of. We are the tribe of Judah. That's who I am. That's who you are. All the folks that came over on that Atlantic slave trade. A lot of people don't want to hear that, but it's according to the scripture. You can shake your head and like, ah, wow, 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 if you want. That's the problem today. Your stiff neck, just because it don't line up with your cup of tea, you need to change your cup of tea. <laughs> In his day, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And all the other tribes of Israel are going to be saved. 
And this is the name whereby he shall be called. The Lord our righteousness. Jesus is our righteousness. Now I know a lot of camps want to call Jesus by all these different names. Which is right. That's his real name. But you got to understand when you're in captivity they give you a name. Your slave name. And that's what you are. And that's what we're going to be until the Lord come and get us. And he's going to give us a new name. And he's going to change his name too. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Jeremiah 37. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. Even It is even the time of Jacob's troubles, but he shall be saved out of it. That day shall be great. Lord have mercy. So there is none like it. None like it. Lord have mercy. You just don't know the destruction that's coming. It is even the time of Jacob's troubles. But relax. Take it easy. He shall be saved out of it. It's going to be destruction all around us. Just like the children of Israel was in Egypt and the death angel passed. But it didn't touch them. All this destruction. 10,000 fall on your right side. 100,000 on your left. But it shall not come. It shall not come nigh thee. He shall be saved out of it. The Lord is going to protect us. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be afraid of that day. Jeremiah 30.10 Therefore fear thou not. The Lord keep telling us. Don't be afraid. Because that day... Lord have mercy. It's going to be so much destruction. And if you're not in the Lord, you're going to be afraid. That's why I keep telling you, fear not. O oh, my servant Jacob, save, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar. And thy seed from the land of thy, their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. O oh, my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O oh, Israel. For lo, I will save thee from afar. The Lord knows where we are. He knows our address. And thy seed from the land of their captivity. He knows we're still in captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. Man, what a day. The Lord has something great in store for us. Just be a little patient. Jeremiah thirty eleven, For I am with thee, saith the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. Uh, he said, uh, he just keep encouraging you. I'm with you to save you. Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered you, yet I will not make a full end of you. But I will correct you in measure and will not leave you altogether unpunished. <laughs> so the Lord is serious. Yeah, he's going to come and get us, but he's going to correct us too. You got to come correct because... He ain't going to be putting up with no foolishness. All this acting stupid and crazy and doing all this stupid stuff we're doing. He, Y'all need to stop it right now. Repent and get right. Turn to the Lord. All this acting a fool that we're doing. Just craziness. You don't even know who you are. I'm trying to tell you you're Israel and you look at us like we're crazy. Trying to tell you you're Judah and you're like, I'm a Christian. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Hear the word of the Lord. Please, those that have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the jerk churches. Jeremiah 31 and 7. But thus saith the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief. Of the nations, publish ye, 
praise ye and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. It's only about Israel. It ain't about nobody else. The children of Israel, Jacob, the children of Judah, the tribe of Judah. It's about Israel. Daniel 3.17 If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. I'm sure you're familiar with this story if you read your Bible at all. Daniel and the, Hebrew, the three Hebrew children, the three Hebrew boys. The king put them in this fiery furnace because they wouldn't bow down to worship this idol. Daniel 3 and 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. So, you're going to throw us in the fire? Throw us in the fire. <laughs> That's how we got to be. That's how we got to be ready. We got to be that ready. Not just ready, but ready, ready. I mean, ready, ready. You can't, you, you. How many of you be willing to go through the fire for the Lord Jesus Christ? How many? Stand up. Raise your hand. Let me hear you. Because we're going to have to go through the fire. Some of us. And if you ain't ready, you ain't going to make it. Daniel 3.24 Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Daniel 3.25 He answered and said, Lo, I see four loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. How did he know the Son of God? <laughs> That's how powerful the Lord is. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Daniel 3.26 Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ye servants of the Most High God come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't be afraid. Even if you gotta go through the fire don't be afraid. Like Dr. Martin Luther King said, we got some difficult days ahead. <clears throat> we got some difficult days ahead. Don't be afraid of the fire. Hosea 1 and 7. For I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. And will not save them by bow or by sword or by battle or by horses or by horsemen. The Lord is going to save us by his own power. And we don't have to worry about anything. Zechariah 8 and 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. The Lord knows his people. He know who you are. He know who we are. He know where we are. Whether we're in the east or the west, the north or south. He's going to come and get us. Because we are his people. Israel. Zechariah 8.13 And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. So, 
we're in the situation that we're in. <laughs> we we messed up. We cursed. There was two curses. The curse that uh, Noah put on uh, the son of Ham, Canaan, and then there was the curse that we didn't obey God. And people get those two curses wrong. A lot of the white folks want to say, all y'all black folks, y'all curse because y'all ham. But we ain't ham. But, but the black people, most of us believe that we ham. <laughs> because they don't read the scriptures. The scriptures that you do err because you know not the scriptures nor the power of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Zechariah 10, 6. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. So, the Lord is going to strengthen us. Because things are going to get hard. Right now, it almost seems like we're living in a lap of luxury, some of us. But don't get comfortable. Don't don't hope, put your heart in, in, in those things that you possess. Life does not consist in the abundance of wealth you possess. All that could be taken away from you tomorrow. What you going to do then? So don't put your trust in the things of, that you have. In it. All that is temporary. It's going to pass away. The Lord is going to bring us to our place, to our home. This world, this place, this captivity where we are, you may have a big family, but that's not your house. You maybe have a big family, that's not. Don't, Lord have mercy. Just because you got those things, yeah, be grateful and be thankful. But don't put your heart and your soul and your own in confidence and on those things. Put your confidence in the Lord. Because some trouble is coming your way. And then what you going to do? It ain't all this stuff that we have is temporary. The condition that we're in is temporary. Zechariah. 12 and 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. <laughs> we are the tribe of Judah. We've been through a whole lot of hell on this earth. Hell and high water. But the Lord has delivered us all from all that stuff. And he's still delivering us. And there's still some more hell to go through. Believe me. But the Lord is going to deliver us first. The Lord shall save the tents of Judah first. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Because Jesus come out of the land, the, the, the tribe of Judah. Matthew 1 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sin he shall save who his people from their sin he shall save who his people who is his people Israel Judah we are Hebrews those are his people not the people that's in Israel today. Those are not his people. Try to tell people that. You look at, what are you talking about? Read your Bible. Those people are not. Even the Revelation even tell you that they fake Jews. Go read Revelation. <laughs> he shall save his people. That's who we are. Matthew 5 and 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
See, these scribes and Pharisees, they were supposed to be righteous people of the law. But most of them was hypocrites because they loved money. And Jesus said, except your righteousness exceed that of the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the tribe of Judah. And this is the... This is where the misconception or misunderstanding comes from in the New Testament. Somehow people think Jesus is talking to everybody in the whole wide world. He's not talking to everybody in the whole wide world. He's only talking to Judah. That's who he's talking to because that's where he came. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Who is his own? Judah is his own. Yes, he's part of Israel, but Israel is 12 tribes. Jesus is part of the tribe of Judah. That's the tribe that he's a part of. Those are the people that he was talking to. That's who we are. We are the tribe of Judah. But there's... I'm going to get into it a little later on. Matthew 7 and 21. Not everyone that said unto me... Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Everybody running around saying, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Was Jesus a Christian? Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He didn't come to start Christianity. Everyone that say, Lord, Lord, shall not enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So he's only talking to Judah. And so that's who he's talking about. Judah. Even though you're Judah. You got a chance of not making it in. If you don't do the will of the Father. That's what he's saying. Now all these other nations ain't even talking to them. So it, <laughs> what they think or say don't matter, really. They can make it in, but only as servants of Judah in Israel. But he's talking to Judah, telling them, look, you need to get your act together. You need to do the will of the Father. Keep my word, keep my commandments, and my statutes. Matthew 10.22 And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. And I, I wonder if you do it. I ask myself, why everybody hate us? <laughs> Jesus said, we're going to be hated by all men. <laughs> everybody hate us. For no reason. Well, I guess they got a reason. But they just hate us. <laughs> Everybody, especially the police. White police. Especially the white people, it seems. Maybe they know what's coming. That's why they hate us. Maybe they wish they was us. That's why they hate us. I don't know. But Jesus said they're going to hate us. His name said, yeah, because they know who we are. They know who we are, but we don't know who we are. <laughs> Ain't that something? But he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So, let them hate. Let the haters hate. Don't, don't, don't be phased by them hating you. You know? When there's all chaos going around you, be in the love of God. Be in, in worship. Singing songs unto the Lord. Don't fear what man should do unto you. Matthew 18 and 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, And become as little children, You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Again, Jesus talking to Judah. Only Judah. Except ye be converted, and because of children, you should not enter the kingdom of heaven. 
Because the kids, they believe. <laughs> they don't take much for them to believe. They don't ask too many questions. You said this, you said that. Okay. That's how we got to be. Innocent. But no, we want to argue and talk back. Be rebellious. Just like them teenagers. Teenagers. Want to rise up. Be disrespectful to your parents. Yeah, I'm talking to you, you teenagers. If you're Judah, cut that stuff out. Do not disrespect your parents. Do not disrespect elders. Do not talk back to people that are your elders, that are older than you. Be respectful of people. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what the way we were taught. That's the way I was taught. And I know a lot of people my age, that's what we were taught. But today, you kids, you teenagers, and young adults, y'all don't respect nobody. You want to talk back? And you women, y'all need to be respectful too. Y'all want to I talk back to men and say all kind of things. Lord have mercy. You better act right, girl. Be respectful to men. Your husband especially. Don't be all talking all crazy and stuff. Read your Bible. Do what it says. Mark 13 and 20. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. The Lord is coming back, and he's gonna have to shorten those days because there's no flesh gonna could be saved if he didn't shorten it. It's gonna be so much destruction. Lord have mercy. But for the elect sake, whom he has chosen, God has chosen some people. He's chosen Judah. And Israel, but specifically Judah. But if you don't want to be chosen, then you're going to be destroyed. <laughs> he already chose you. All you got to do is accept it. Get in agreement with the Word of God. How can two walk together except they agree? Agree with the Word of God. You've been chosen. Agree with the Word of God that you are Judah. not go ahead and be walking all you're going to be in that destruction that's coming mark 16 and 9 now when jesus was risen early the first day of the week he appeared first to mary magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils and this is after the death and resurrection of jesus christ he appeared to mary magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him <coughs> as they mourned and wept. And she goes to them, look y'all, I saw the Lord. He's risen. <laughs> they looking at her like they crossed out of the sun like, what are you talking about? Men, sometimes we need to listen to women. <laughs> and don't be so quick to judge. She went and told them that had been with him. Jesus already told them that, look, I'm going to die and I'm going to rise again on the third day. He already told them that. And now, he done rose. Mary was the first to see him. And she go and tell him. And they, they looking at her cross-eyed. Like, what are you talking about? Matthew, Mark 16 and 11. And, and they, when they heard it, that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. They didn't believe her. That's how we are today. Tell somebody something about the Lord. They're supposed to know. 
They say they know. But they don't believe. Like Thomas. I ain't going to believe till I put my finger in his side. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Mark 16 and 12. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. So Jesus appeared to two more of his disciples. Mark 16, 13. And they went and told it unto the residue. Neither believed they them either. What are you talking about? We ain't seeing. <laughs> so Jesus had to straighten this mess out. Mark 16 and 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at me and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Jesus was mad. He was pissed off. Like Y'all been with me three years. I told y'all I was going to be crucified. I was going to rise again. These people see me and tell y'all and y'all look at them like they crazy. What are y'all thinking about? You got to have faith. You got to believe. <laughs> Jesus was mad. <laughs> You're telling them, look, y'all need to believe, folk. When they say that they saw me, they're not making it up. They saw me. Now you see me. Do you believe now? Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, Now this is what I want you to do. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <laughs> and so man, this scripture, and that's why I'm hitting on it because I don't want to be partial to any scripture that people say, well you didn't hear on this scripture, and you didn't hear on that scripture. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Everybody in the whole world. That's because we are everywhere. Judah and Israel is everywhere. That's why we got to go into all the world. We're scattered. That's what he's talking about. We're every creature that's scattered. He ain't talking about nobody else. The scriptures that the... They did in the Old Testament are the same thing as today. Ain't nothing changed. We're still Israel. We're still Judah. That's who Jesus came to save. Period. People want to come up with their own ideas. Mark 16, 16. He said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So, if you believe and get baptized, you'll be saved. If you don't believe, you're going to be damned. Period. Who? Judah. Israel. That's who he's talking about. That's who he's talking about. Judah and Israel. He ain't talking about nobody else. If you believe, you baptize, you'll be saved. If you don't believe, you're going to be damned. Luke 168. He says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he had visited and redeemed his people. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. The Lord God of Israel. He ain't the God of nobody else. He ain't the God of Christian. He's the God of Israel. He hath redeemed his people. Get that in your head. You've been brainwashed. The Lord, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He ain't the Lord God of Christian. I have to say it twice because everybody thinks, oh, I'm a Christian. He's not the Lord God of Christians. He's the Lord God of Israel. He hath redeemed his people, Israel. Luke 169. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. For us, Israel. Nobody else. That's all who 
gonna be saved. That's what it's all about. I don't know where you're getting your information from. If you're reading the Bible, um, I don't know where. What? 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 You, I don't know where you're getting your information from. Luke thirteen twenty three. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? He said unto them. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Straight and narrow. Straight and narrow. That's it. Strive to enter in at that straight gate. Will many be saved? No, many won't be saved. Why? <laughs> because they stupid. They don't believe. They they going into this Broadway. We Christian. Everybody. Have... Many I say will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Shall not be able to come in. Why? <laughs> because they're not coming through the straight gate. The straight and the narrow gate. Luke 13.25 when once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying Lord, Lord, open unto us and he shall answer and say unto you I know you not when she are I don't know you <laughs> what you doing knocking on my door <laughs> I don't know you get away from here Lord, open up. Let us in. I don't know you. He shall answer and say, I know you not. Where she are? I don't know who you are. I just come from Israel. Who are you? <laughs> that's what the scripture says. So you can get mad at me all you want. But that's what the scripture says. He only come for Israel. John 3, 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus had came to Jesus by night and said, We know that you're a teacher. Because you couldn't be doing all this stuff that you're doing if God wasn't with you. And Jesus just broke it down to him. You need to be born of the Spirit. You need to be born of water. And if you're not born of that, you can't make it in the kingdom of God. I don't care if you are Judah. I don't care if you are Israel. You have to be born of the kingdom. You have to be born of the water. And of the spirit. And that's all he's talking to. He's talking to Israel. And he's talking to Judah. But specifically Judah. John 3 6. That which is born of the flesh. Is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit. Is spirit. Easy enough to understand. Right? John 3 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee. You must be born again. John 3, 8. The wind blow where it lists. And you hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell from whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. John 3, 9. Nicodemus. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? John 3.10 Jesus answered and said unto him, Are you a master of Israel and knowest not these things? You see, Nicodemus is a master of Israel. Nobody else. He a master of Israel. He no other than they. Israel. That's all they're talking about here. It's Israel. 
And I'm saying this for a reason, for a point. Art thou a master of Israel and knoweth not these things? Because it ain't about nobody else but Israel. I hope you're getting the point and you understand what I'm saying. Verily, John 3, 11. Verily, verily, I say unto you, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. And that's all you other folks out here. This Mr. Know-it-all, Mr. Mr. Prophets and Mr. Teachers and Mr. Pastors and uh, Mr. Evangelists and uh, people got all these theological degrees and Mr. Bishops, all these people. We speak that we know and testify that we have seen, but you receive not our witness, my witness, the witness of the Word of God. I'm telling you who you are. But you receive not our witness. I'm telling you of the tribe of Judah. But you receive not our witness. I'm telling you that you have the tribe. You have the seed of Abraham. But you receive not our witness. If I had told you earthly things. And you believe not. How shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Why is it so hard for you to believe that you're Judah? Why is it so hard to believe that you have the that you of Israel? Why is it so hard for you to believe that? These are earthly things. John 3:14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. He was telling them, look, I got to be lifted up. I got to be lifted up. John 3.15 Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have a eternal life. Moses lifted up the serpent. Everybody looked on the serpent. They lived. So, son of man. Everybody that believe on the son of man. Whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Whosoever, whosoever. See, see, it said whosoever. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Who, say it again. Whosoever. Right, right, right. Whosoever. It's still only talking about Israel. It hasn't changed. But for whatever reason, you, whoever, you, everybody in the whole world. It's all, it's only about Israel. It's always about Israel. It's always about Judah. That's who it's about. Those are the whosoever. But you don't receive our witness. Whosoever believeth in him. Whosoever. Israel is the whosoever. Judah is the whosoever. You don't even believe who you are. I'm telling you. You're Judah. You're like, I'm not no Judah. <laughs> John 3.16. For God. This is it. This, this y'all scripture here, boy. For God so loved the world. See, I told you. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. Everybody knows this scripture. They say they know it, but they don't know. And I was one of them. A friend of mine was talking to me, and we had it out. I was like, look, it's a gospel. I was one of those people. And that's what it was talking. He's like, Mike, go back and read the scriptures from the beginning to end, to the end. Go back and read, reread, read, reread. Read, read, read. He talking about Israel. But he said the world. <laughs> go back and read. That's what you got to do. You got to go back and read. He's only talking about Israel. For God so loved the world. The world of Israel. That he gave it. He only gave his son for Israel. 
that whosoever of Israel believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He ain't coming back for nobody else but Israel. Because we the only one that's lost. We the only one that's been persecuted and hated. This is the time of the Gentiles. They ruling everything. They ain't being persecuted. So this scripture, for God so loved the world, he's talking about Israel. I hope you receive our witness. But I try to talk to some friends of mine. Like, hey, man, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear it. It's going to mess up their theology. You know, they got their organizations, their church organizations, their 501c3s, their church business. And that's going to, it don't rock well with them. You know, they got to get their tithes and their offerings. So that's kind of going against the grain for them. They sound like them scribes and Pharisees and Nicodemus to me. But Jesus went on and kept on talking to him. He said in John 3, 17, For God sent not his Son into the world, see, the world, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See, he's talking about the whole world. <laughs> no, he's not. He's only talking about the world of Israel, the people of Israel. That's who he's talking about. He's using these words because that's... Nicodemus knew who he was talking about. He didn't have a problem with that. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. He sent not his son into the world of Israel. He didn't send his son to condemn Israel, but that the Israel through him might be saved. You see how that plays out? Israel through him might be saved. He, he's of the tribe of Israel. He's the son of God. He's of the tribe of Judah. He's of the seed of Abraham. He's of the children of Israel. He ain't coming from the whole, for the whole world. What are y'all thinking about? John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. He said unto who? He said unto the Jews. He said unto who? He said unto the Jews. The Jews. Jewish people. Not Jewish. The Jews. Judah. Judah. Not Jewish. Not like G G Jewish. Not like the Jews. He, the Jewish is like Jew. But the real Jews. He said unto the Jews. Which what? Which believed on him. These Jews believed on him. He said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. You see, who is he talking to? He's talking to the Jew. This is the world that he's talking to. He's talking to the Jews, the Judah, tribe of Judah. That's the world he's talking to. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. John 10.9 I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. See, it said, any man, any man. <coughs> I am the door. By me, if any man. Man, I'm talking about everybody. <laughs> any man that's Israel. Any man that's of Judah. That's who he's talking about. It hasn't changed. You got to understand the word is in context. You got to understand the context of the word. He's not talking about... He's not talking about everybody. Where are you getting this from? He's only talking about Judah. But he said any man. Yeah, any man of Israel. Any man of Judah. John 11.50 Nor consider... That it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole world, whole nation perish not. Now this is Caiaphas prophesying, didn't know what he was prophesying. He said, y'all don't even consider that it's expedient for us. Us who? 
Israel. It's expedient for Israel that one man should die for the people. The people of who? The people of Israel, not the people of the world. The people of Israel. And that the whole nation, not the whole world, perish not. You get that? Lord have mercy. I hope you get it. Please, Lord. Open up their ears, their understanding, so they can see and hear. John 12, 47. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. See? See? It keeps saying any man. <laughs> He's still talking about Israel. I don't care what you say. It's still talking about Israel. They know. You should know. But I understand why you don't know. Because the world has hid it so that you couldn't know the so-called church. Oh yeah, God so loved the world. <laughs> but thank the Lord, he's opening up our understanding. What we calling this is becoming awake. Seeing the light. Because we've been asleep. And that's if you can't see it, that means you're not awake yet. You don't receive our witness. If any man, meaning if any man of Israel, if any man of the tribe of Judah, hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. He didn't want to believe? Fine, that's fine. Well, I came not to judge the world. I came not to judge Judah. I ain't come to judge Israel. They don't want to accept me? Fine, fine. I just came to save them. But they got to believe me to be saved. I mean, I'm telling them who I am. I came unto my own, and my own received me not. Who is his own? Judah. Acts 2.21 And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. Whosoever. See? told you whosoever that means everybody everybody is a who's no we're still only talking about Israel and it shall come to pass that whosoever of the tribe of Judah or the children of Israel shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved but you said back then like Rahab those people they got saved so that means Somebody else can be saved. Well, technically, in the sense that you can, but God didn't come to save you. If you believe, that's good. Go ahead and believe. <laughs> Go ahead and believe. But you're gonna be God, you're gonna be a servant of Israel. And if you can't believe that, then you probably don't want to believe. Because that's that's what you're gonna be. If you're not Israel, you're not Judah. You're gonna be a servant of Israel, or a servant of Judah. If you want to believe in Christ, and I know that's gonna be a hard pill for you to swallow because you haven't been taught that. But go back and read your Bible from the beginning to the end, please. Just read. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever of the tribe of Judah, of the children of Israel, all the scriptures are saying this. Acts 2.47 Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be be saved. Who should be saved? Israel. Israel. Judah. Israel should be saved. Judah should be saved. Such as should be saved. What about all the other folk? Israel and Judah. That's all that should be saved. Such the Lord added daily to the church, such as should be saved. What? 
What do you all understand about that? <laughs> I never heard that before. I know you never heard it before because nobody want to teach you like that. But that's the truth. I don't know about that. Well, it's up to you. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other, but there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only the name of Jesus. No other name given among men whereby we, who is we? Israel. Judah, we must be saved. That's the only way we can be saved. And nobody else even coming to save them. <laughs> he, he, he didn't come to save them. Acts 16.30 And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Did I change these scriptures? I think I made a mistake in, on my download. Okay, this is Paul. He was preaching to uh, prisoners in the house. Jailhouse rocked. <laughs> jailhouse rocked. <laughs> and uh, the chains fell off Paul and Silas in the Roman jail. And the guard said, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Now, this is one of those scriptures that could be taken to be like Rahab the harlot. Because this dude was fearing for his life. He's like, they're going to kill me, please, y'all. What, what can I do to be saved? Because they're going to kill me. <laughs> and Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou, and thou shalt be saved. So, all y'all folks out there that Jesus loves everybody, yeah, believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But, it's coming with a price. You're going to serve Israel. Believe that too. I know you ain't been taught that. But that's scripture. Romans 5 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Saved from wrath. That's what he's saving us from. He's saving us from wrath. And who is he going to be taking the wrath on all those folks out there? All those other folks. That's not Israel. That's not Judah. Saved from his wrath. And so that's why they want to try to get saved. Because they know he's going to be taking out his wrath on them. So, yeah, y'all may be able to get saved, but y'all going to be our servants. So, that's it. Y'all just need to understand that. Y'all know who y'all are. <laughs> Romans 5.10 For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. We've been reconciled to God by the death of Jesus. So shall we be saved. Who shall be saved? Israel shall be saved by his life. It's still talking about Israel. Romans 9, 27. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Who? Israel. Who? Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Only a remnant of Israel is going to be saved. But it's going to be a large remnant. It ain't going to be a small remnant. It's going to be a large remnant. And some people think remnant very small. Well, it depends on the number. I mean, if it's, if it's 10 and the remnant is 2, yeah, that's small. 
But if it's ten billion, and then the remnant is a, a million or a twenty, one million, then that that's a large remnant. So a remnant of Israel shall be saved. It's all about Israel. It, it ain't say nothing about nobody other, other nations. So I don't know where you getting all this stuff that God is coming for everybody else. He's not. Jesus is not coming for everybody else. Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Because Israel, yeah, we, we hard-headed. We hard-headed people. Try to tell us, you, you're hard-headed. And you want to go, I'm a Christian. I'm Baptist. I'm Methodist. I'm this. I'm that. You tell them you're Judah. I don't know Judah. I don't know Israel. <laughs> Stiff neck, hard neck. Boy, just don't want to listen. Open up your eyes. Open up your ears. Romans 10.9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But I'm a Christian. I already did that. And I'm, you say I'm Judah. Okay, I'm Judah. But I already did that. So I'm still a Christian. But I'm, you, you want to say I'm Judah? Okay, I guess I'll be Judah. But, but I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian Judah. You just want to hold on to that Judah, don't I mean, that Christian, don't you? I right, hold on to it if that's what you want to do. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See? Whosoever. You talking about everybody. <laughs> uh, whosoever. Whosoever that's Israel. Whosoever that's of the tribe of Judah that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm going to keep saying it. I know you don't want to hear it, but I'm going to keep saying it. Romans 11, 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. All Israel shall be saved. It's always about Israel. You get to the New Testament and people act like Israel don't even exist anymore. Oh, it's just about the church. It's just about the Christians. <laughs> and I know why that is. I'm going to get on a scripture that tells it. Here it is right now. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 16. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. To fill up their sins always. For the wrath is come upon them to the utmost. <laughs> so Judah is very stiff necked you know, they don't they, they they selfish and they think it's all about them. Judah is not all about us. We got other brothers and sisters in Christ which are Israel. But because they sin in the New Testament, and I hope you're hearing what I'm saying, they refer to Israel as Gentiles. Every time you see most of the time you see the Gentiles, it's about Israel. Jesus did refer to them, the Gentiles on the other sense. There's two sets of Gentiles. Gentiles that's of of of, of Japheth and his, his boys and all the rest of the Gentiles. And then the Gentiles that are Israel. Israel was scattered amongst the Gentiles so they became known as Gentiles, and that's what Judah referred to them as. And that's what you see right here. Forbidding us to speak to Israel, the Israel Gentiles, that they might be saved. And the scriptures call this a mystery because everybody don't know about it. And I know people are like, I don't believe that what we're saying. Go look it up. If you don't believe me, just go look it up. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. Because all the rest of Israel, they got to be saved. They're Gentiles. First Timothy 1 and 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept, accept, 
acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Israel and Judah, we're the sinners. We're the ones that need Jesus. We sin from the foundation of the world. From the beginning. When Adam sinned. Yeah, Adam was Hebrew. From Adam to, 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 to Noah, Jesus had to go and preach to them. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He came to save Israel. God's people. God's chosen people. That's who he came to save. I know someone can say, well, you know, he used Israel, but, you know, he left them and then prove it. Show me the scriptures that prove what you're saying. 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Who will have all men to be saved. See, all men. They're talking about everybody in the whole wide world, man. And to come into the knowledge of the truth. Well, you can look at it that way. I mean, it does say all men. But you got to understand it in the context. He's talking about all men of Israel. All men of Judah. It hasn't changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament. That's the context. Show me where you're getting your context from. 2 Timothy 1.9 Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. See, he called us even before the world began. We are a holy calling. We're the only one called to do this, to preach. Judah. That's who we, we He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purposes and grace. We, we, we're compelled to do it. We have to do it. That's what we're here for, to teach the word of God. Because we can all, we're the only one that can do it. I hope you got that, Judah. Judah. We, we're the only one that can do it. I was telling another brother of mine. He hasn't woke up yet. Uh, the landscape is changing for the so-called church. Jesus already told you, where, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. Everybody thinks you got to go to this building and folks behind these buildings and all this stuff. It ain't got nothing to do with what we're supposed to be doing. Titus 2.14 Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. He gave himself for who? For us. Who is us? Israel. Judah, that's who us is, that he might redeem us. Who is us? Israel, Judah, from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. We peculiar with zealous of good work unto himself. We belong to the Lord. That's why we were created. That's why we're here. We're not here for ourselves. We're here for the Lord. We was made for his purpose. Jude 1 and 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward, destroyed them that believed not. So listen to me and listen to me good. After he brought the people out of the land of Egypt, they moaned and groaned and why did you do this and why did you take us out of here and we had better back in Egypt moaning and groaning and mumbling and grumbling. The Lord's word, <laughs> y'all ain't getting in. Y'all ain't crossing over into the promised land. Y'all ain't going to make it. He destroyed them. Same way it is right now. The Lord is about to come back. And letting, trying to wake you up. Shake you. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. 
You are Israel. And you moaning and groaning. I ain't no Israel. You're Judah. Wake up. He's saying, I'm bringing this to your remembrance. For a reason. The Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. Afterward destroyed them that believe not. If you don't believe that you are Judah. And that you are Israel. You're, you're on the verge of being destroyed. You don't even believe who you are. You don't even know who you are. Now, even though I'm telling it to you, you, well, that's not me. <laughs> you don't believe you're going to be destroyed. Revelation 5 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And they sang a new song. Who is they? Israel, Judah, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed who? Redeemed us, Israel, Judah, back to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. We're everywhere. That's why he talk about he came to save the world because we are everywhere. So when he talk about the world, he's talking about us because we are everywhere. We're every, every kindred, every tongue, every people, and every nation. That's why he said the world because he's talking about us, Judah, Israel. Revelation 21, 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. The nations of them which are saved. The nations of Israel. All the nations of Israel. Twelve tribes. Shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory. We are kings. Glory to God. We bring our glory and our honor into the city. Revelation 21, 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. God got your name. He knows who you are. He already written, wrote your name. You, all you got to do is believe it. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. God, he loves you. He loves Israel. He loves Judah. Your name is written in the, in the book of life. Those are the only people that's going to get in. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I hope you got something out of it, and I'll see you next time. Peace.